Here with me now to discuss the euro alongside some of the latest development in the European debt crisis is Geoffrey Yu, Senior FX Strategist at UBS in London. Geoffrey, thank you very much for joining me. Now again, limited progress at yesterday's Eurozone Finance Minister meeting left the euro near a two-year low against the US dollar and weighs on risk appetite. Were market expectations for this meeting really that high to begin with? And with questions regarding the ESM and the timetable for the setup of this single banking supervisory still up in the air, do you think this even undermines the credibility of the decisions even made at these summits and meetings? I actually uh, question whether markets even looking at this year group meeting, especially considering the ESM is um, still pending a court case um, in Karlsruhe and uh, Germany uh, with the uh, Constitutional Court. So rather than saying expectations were low, I don't think there were any expectations to begin with. The euro is declining not because of lack of progress on the sovereign issues. I think people are just looking squarely at the growth picture right now, looking at the eurozone, looking at other places, and on a relative basis, it's really not looking very good. We need to see policymakers, we need to see lawmakers act quickly to get a growth package in place. Otherwise, uh, conditions in the eurozone could go from bad to worse. Of course, it's not looking any rosy anywhere else, um, but think uh, the uh, focus has so much been on resolving the debt issue when German data has been holding up somewhat throughout the first half of the year. Now everything's turned around, uh, so markets are looking at different trades now. Well, in that case, in your personal opinion, what kind of measures do you think we need to be seeing to help actually alleviate the fundamental problems? Well, the ECB has already cut rates, and they've clearly said that this was a monetary policy decision in line with economic needs. Of course, markets will expect them to do more or so. There'll probably be more questions about whether the austerity only approach um, that's uh, being dictated or rather being uh, supported by uh, Germany and Northern Europe, whether that is sustainable or not. Of course, there has been some flexibility now. We've seen a new growth package, for example, at the latest summit, but still uh, at this stage, um, we probably need some new ideas quick. Also, Jeffrey, some economists still think that a Eurozone breakup is part of the solution to the crisis, not the problem. Now, this is only a suggestion, but would it not be in some ways beneficial for certain countries to leave the Euro? This does, of course, have the potential to cause a chain reaction. But where do you personally stand on this viewpoint? I think it's a total fallacy. I don't believe uh, that any country will want to leave the Eurozone voluntarily. Um, you don't help yourself by um, committing near suicide. Uh, so I think that is the case uh, for Southern Europe. Um, uh, we, we haven't really tested it. Of, of, of course, you, you can't really prove, prove the counterfactual, um, but at the end of the day, I don't think um, you know, any country is uh, looking at that solution yet. As imperfect this monetary union, maybe if it really uh, should have collapsed, it probably would have happened a long time ago. Either markets would have pushed it or uh, the human cost would have been so great um, that individual countries would have opted to leave. But if you look at the opinion polls in Southern Europe, if you look at how much pain uh, countries like Greece and Spain are still enduring, uh, but there's still no willingness to go back to their own individual currencies, it's clear that there's enough will at the stage um, to sustain the monetary union. And I think Northern Europe and uh, the European Commission, all policymakers, they really should still take advantage of this goodwill um, uh, to uh, continue reform and continue the structural changes needed to consolidate a more perfect monetary union. As we know, EU finance ministers have agreed to grant Spain an extra year until 2014 to reach its deficit reduction targets. Even so, are these targets right now still not quite far-fetched for Spain to reach? And what about these Spanish bond yields, as Spanish borrowing costs continue to remain a huge concern, as they're still elevated around that 7% level? Um, targets are just numbers uh, at the end of the day. It's, um, it's, it's a sustainability issue, and the fact that even though Spanish bond yields are high um, and the uh, the banking sector recapitalization and support you know, these are pro the process um, to complete this has been set in motion but uh, we're not seeing massive deposit flight we're not seeing a massive run on the Spanish government bonds of course there may be institutional issues uh, behind this uh, but clearly markets are not pricing in uh, uh, you know, long-term sustainability issues uh, yet. Uh, and, and here again is where, you know, growth in the ECB might come into the equation. I mean, if we do get euro lower, either due to uh, continued monetary easing from the ECB uh, and of uh, the need of stimulus, uh, then we may just see a pickup in growth. And uh, if markets begin to price that in as well, I mean, we're coming off such a low base already, both in terms of where Spanish deficit targets are and where Spanish yields are, i.e. yields are very high, prices for Spanish bonds are very low. So you could argue the only way it is up, the only thing that I could to derail this process is either the total political breakdown 
or an unforeseen financial incident uh, that, uh, again, gets markets concerned. Um, but, you know, both these issues are really a bit far off the horizon right now. So I don't see any reason to be that pessimistic um, on the Eurozone's long-term structural integrity. But a weaker euro is part of the solution at this stage of if the Eurozone is to survive. Well, looking at all of this, what do you see as being the main driving forces behind euro movement over the coming weeks? I think the market is still going to start pricing in uh, further monetary easing uh, from the ECB, uh, you know, whether voluntarily or not. And probably it's going to be uh, weaker growth numbers and uh, you know, further recessionary signs are pushing things uh, to the downside, especially on the part of the ECB. I doubt the ECB will would um, try to do things voluntarily. If we do get better than expected moves towards uh, fiscal consolidation, then that's a welcome bonus. Um, but again, uh, we need to see a lower euro at this point. Uh, it really is a necessity and probably the ECB will realise it sooner rather than later. Well, looking at the euro's performance for the first half of the year, is the euro trend still towards the downside going forward? Absolutely. We have a 115 target for year end. Jeffrey, thank you very much for your insight there and for sharing your outlook for the euro. Now we'll have plenty more coming up on Duca's Copy TV later on this afternoon and plenty coming up later on in the week. But for the moment, goodbye.